In the past, I found that uh, quite a few followers liked uh, uh, when I went through an old electronics magazine. And here it is Wireless World of January 1964. You can find it on the World Wide Web, on uh, worldradiohistory.com. And perhaps I'm uh, going to be some somewhat critical regarding uh, the circuits on this Wireless World magazine, though of course I know the Wireless World magazine had, uh, say, an enormous good uh, uh, editor, etc., etc. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That's that's very important. I've uh, say uh, made this kind of scope, set the camera to. I hope a better view compared to my earlier video where I uh, summed through an electronics magazine. So, of course, we have here the uh, editorial command, etc., etc. Many, many circuits, always very, very interesting. And, well, I want to, of course, here. That's interesting. A uh, seven-in uh, organ. Uh, you can find that on the World Wide Web. It's say an organ with two two electrodes or two parts of electrodes that can, uh, by moving with your hand or by moving with a light source or whatever, dark and light, can generate different audio frequency. So it's a kind of organ. Of course, I don't know uh, uh, whether this is the case here in this article anyway. Uh, I, my idea is that it is perhaps interesting to tell. Of course, many, many advertisements. Of course, Mullert electrolytic capacitors. Well, very interesting. Here the triode pentotube PCF802. The P means that we have a, a, a current in the, uh, the wire that sets the that is responsible for the electron flow. So the incandescent wire inside that PCF tube and P means uh, always, at least in Europe, that such a filament inside that tube needs a voltage in the order of 18 volts. Anyway. So it's the cathode that's heated up via that uh, filament. Anyway, wireless word, etc. World, etc. etc. Not word, but world. And this is, of course, a very, very interesting article of T. D. Towers regarding elements of transistor pulse circuits and. Uh, when you follow my channel, I am more or less always busy with these kinds of circuits, say multivibrators, uh, uh, sine wave oscillators, etc., etc. You can of course ask why. Why is this so interesting? Uh, well, it's a kind of focus on. Uh, electronic circuits that has to have to deliver a certain uh, waveform. But this is of course not about that. This is about how a transistor 
uh, reacts when it gets a pulse on its base or you can also uh, send the pulse to the emitter of a transistor anyway let's look and see and watch very very interesting and that that is also why I have chosen this um, magazine uh, there's always for me a kind of balance between say the things that I want to explain to youngsters or so or everyone interested in electronics etc etc so we have here the so-called phase splitter well it is by the way complete properly circuit but it's important to tell that for instance here this transistor has no bias uh, it can work as a phase splitter so here we have say the positive part of the phase when you send in here a sine wave of whatever frequency let's look let's say audio a thousand hertz uh, the uh, you can say find here the positive part of that sine wave and here the negative part of that sine wave but the problem of this circuit is that there is no bias and that's a kind of problem that we see everywhere here these circuits are completely right no um, say a real uh, complaint about such a circuit but when the transistor has no bias and when you send in here a certain signal audio especially an AC signal uh, the transistor will act as a as a kind of overdriven switch when there is no resistor here to set the bias and no resistor here to set the bias and you can see that in many circuits that I published there is here a potentiometer of 22k this is by the way a PP transistor can also be an NP transistor in that case the this must be positive and this must be negative so let's watch look to another circuit of this magazine uh, this is a phase inverter here uh, I have to say that I don't know so much about that issue phase the phase issue anyway so I cannot comment here on this circuit back to the next circuit the so-called emitter follower well that's of course say one of the classic circuits in electronics uh, the only problem here that there is no bias of the emitter follower so in this case when you send in for instance here an audio signal between 20 Hertz and 20 kilohertz or 20 Hertz perhaps 400 kilohertz this circuit will not work you need here a resistor between the collector here and the base and that resistor is 220,000 ohms and this resistor must be 1k so a thousand ohms uh, this is a PMP transistor so here is a negative and here is the a positive when you need a NPN transistor this is the positive and this is the negative etc uh, etc et the whole circuit stays the same and send in here that signal of whatever kind via a uh, separation capacitor in the order of 100 nano far out I see on my camera that I only have uh, 
approximately five minutes. Anyway, no problem. Go to the well. This is a so-called para fast amplifier. I never made it, and I cannot comment on it. This is a differential differential amplifier. Uh, I have to say that I wanted to make it and uh, did some experiments, but don't have say uh, conclusions about how to uh, make it in practice, etc., etc. You can see this differential amplifier, for instance, in audio amplifiers, going from 10 watt and especially on the higher audio output, say. 50 watt or so. You often see this set up. I have no experience with experience with that, so I cannot explain much more about it. Well, uh, I I am on 11 minutes on my uh, on my uh, camera. Anyway. Uh, transistor operation amplifier, I don't pay attention to that because you can use, for instance, when you want to do experiments, a 7 war one uh, op amp or a TL071 op amp and there are videos on my YouTube channel where I uh, explain that. This is perhaps interesting, it's a sign changer. I don't know exactly what it means. Uh, I think the waveform is changed, and well, uh, it looks to me as a kind of amplifier. But of course, when you uh, overdrive a transistor, give it a too high um, input voltage, the waveform will change in general from a sine wave to a square wave, etc, etc. Well, okay. Um, here a scale changer, I cannot comment on that. Here an integrator, well, that's very important. Here we see the so-called integrator circuit. Uh, you can also make that with only one resistor and one capacitor. Here a transistor is used, that means that um, it could have better properties. That's very interesting. So a good idea to do an experiment with this circuit. Use here for instance not a PMP transistor but an NPN transistor. Use for instance a BC547B NPN transistor. Uh, current amplification is 300. Use here for instance 1k, 1000 ohms, and here for instance uh, a resistor between 1k, 1000 ohms, and 10,000 ohms. Send in a, a, a signal, uh, an audio signal, or whatever, uh, not whatever, but an audio signal via a separation capacitor here, and then look. What happens with that, say, sine wave that you can send in here? Sine wave. Uh, I think it can change or will change to the waveform that you want or that you need. I, I am on 14 minutes on my camera. So. Uh, the differentiator is the opposite circuit uh, in my one of my books, and I will perhaps give the link in the description. I also discuss the differentiator and the integrator. Here is an adder. Well, that's completely logic. Uh, one and one makes two. So, uh, anyway, let's go further. So, perhaps. Uh, of course, this is interesting, a capacitor charge circuit, 
A capacitor is charged in many ways in a not linear way, but here is an interesting circuit with which you can charge a capacitor in a more linear way. So that means that when you have here a circuit that shortcuts this uh, periodically, you can f make a sawtooth wave that can, for instance, drive. Uh, a cathode ray tube. So that was more or less all. Uh, the Miller integrator, I've paid attention to the Miller circuit in a, an earlier video perhaps. I'm going to show the link. The simple fact is that the capacitor here between the collector and in this case the base is multiplied. So it's a capacitance multiplier. And this is of course, say, uh, not very easy to understand when you see this circuit, but on my YouTube channel there are circuits where I have explained that in a more or less easy way. Anyway, so uh, finally bootstrap circuits go to the world wide web and search for the bootstrap circuit the, the bootstrap circuit ha a changes a low impedance at the output sorry uh, uh, has a high impedance at the input and changes it to a low impedance to the output there are many variations of this circuit on the World Wide Web, especially in audio circuits, where, for instance, here a high uh, impedance is necessary and a low impedance out is also necessary. I am on, say, 17 minutes, so I think my camera will uh, uh, stop suddenly. So let's skip this more or less. Darlington pair. Uh, I paid much attention to Darlington's on the on my YouTube channel. Here it's made with two PMP transistors. You can make it with two NPN transistors. For instance, here the BD BD139 and here the two N3055. It has an extremely current amplification factor that is very good and can be used very uh, in very in many applications. For instance, in say the so-called Miller circuit. Anyway, what's this? Bootstrap. Again a bootstrap circuit. Changing, uh, not changing, but uh, usable to connect a high input impedance source and transfer it to a low impedant source. What's this? A blocking oscillator. Many of these circuits are on my YouTube channel. 